What is the karyotype that you are able to see classically? 11th chromosome is showing deletion. So, 11th chromosomal deletion is typical feature which you see in case of the Wilms tumor is what need to be remembered. Even last time, Ames uh, may also there was a karyotype which was given and uh, asked you to instead of asking in English, it is asked in pictures. Just you need to see the 11th chromosome is deleted and call uh, Wilms tumor at that hour. 30 year old renal transplant recipient had lymphadenopathy. Lymph node biopsy has been done. What do you see doctor? Owl eyed appearance which is typical of lymphoma. So what is the common cause for the post transplant lymphoproliferative disorder is a very important question. It is the Epstein Barr virus which you need to remember. Huh? CMV does not, is not the main virus implicated in, it is seen in the post transplant phase. But PTLD, post transplant lymphoproliferative disorder is very unique for EBV. Huh? Huh. Which is part of, it is a typical uh, lymphomatous uh, uh, histology. PTLD with all eyed it being, uh, you like to call it as uh, CMB. No, uh, I'll check that. You have a valid point, uh, arguable point. All right. Then, doctor, what is the appearance of glomeruli? in this given case. Typically, this is uh, classically called uh, a uh, tram track appearance, tram track appearance uh, where uh, a double contoured line of the basement membrane is what you are able to appreciate, the double contour, two contours like a tram track. Straight away if they say tram track, the answer is easy. Really, they showed tram track even for seasoned nephrologists also. Renal biopsy is a uh, renal pathologist. It is a challenge to catch up. But anyway, point is uh, one glomerulopathy. All classical glomerulopathies, how do they look like under microscope? You need to have uh, that uh, internalization of that imagery. So, Dr. MPGN51 has got tram tracks and uh, there are uh, uh, immune deposits, coarse granularity and uh, uh, it can be nephritic or nephrotic. And MPGN2 has got dense deposit disease also, it is called as, is what need to be remembered. Now what is this lesion? It is classical of diabetic Kimmelstein Wilson's lesion. This is unmistakable, easy to recognize the nodular uh, uh, glomerulosclerosis of diabetes um, is what need to be remembered. Now doctor, uh, which is the glomerular lesion shown in the figure? It is classical of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. So other way of asking, in focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, what will be the immunoglobulin deposition pattern? IgM and C3 are the ones which typically get deposited is what you need to basically remember. We invite our Sikindraban students, Khaza, Parvez and the students across the country from Guntur, Vijayawada, Tirupati and um, uh, Pan India. <coughs> then doctor, uh, who is this scientist who is a naval officer? And uh, he has uh, helped the sailors with the bleeding diathesis, which is due to scurvy. And uh, he is the great uh, James Lind, is what need to be remembered. So, who is this uh, scientist who invented a vaccine? He is uh, Edward Jenner. Then, what is this called as? ILR, ice lined refrigerator. So, what is the temperature which is used to store the 
वैक्सीन्स टू टू एट डिग्री सेल्सियस इज आइसलाइन रेफ्रिजरेटर सो हाउ मेनी वैक्सीन वायल्स विल फिट इन टू दिस दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड डे केयर कैरियर ऑफ वैक्सीन्स सो डे केयर कैरियर कैन बी एबल टू कैरी अराउंड सिक्स टू एट वैक्सीन्स इज वॉच यूनिट टू रिमेंबर then what is this contraceptive which is being shown how many months frequently you want to give it is a dipo medroxy progesterone acetate dipo provera which is uh, basically administered once in every 3 months is what you need to understand now a 67 year old uh he drank 8 units of alcohol poor memory but he also has a wide based gait and urinary incontinence actually alcohol poor memory is given in order to mislead you towards alcoholism but corsica psychosis cannot explain wide based gait and what is the uh, neuro imaging showing normal pressure hydrocephalus is what you need to remember what is the triad of features doctor dementia altered gait and urinary incontinence urinary is it that easy to diagnose any elderly person will have all these things because of the prostatomegaly he will have urinary problem because of the age related dementia he will forget then what else wide based gait wide based gait wide based gait is possible if he is having severe arthritis so it's a question of your uh, clinical judgment 64 year old with febrile who is a febrile patient with altered sensorium classical of herpes simplex virus encephalitis involving the temporal lobe of the brain and uh, what is true statement about it temporal lobe involvement is very common is what need to be remembered then what a most common presenting feature of porphyria cutanea tarda skin fragility and blistering affecting the face hands and scalp is a very classical finding A 49 year old with rapidly worsening lethargy and nausea, progressive shortness of breath, productive cough of blood-stained sputum, and elevated BP and uh, crepitation. Siyanka is positive. And what do you see on the nose? Flattening of the nasal bridge. And what do you see? Cavitating lesions in the lung. Itna bolne ke baad bhi agar aap visitor ko pehchan nahi paaye to. मरे हुए वेजनर हेवन में उनके आत्मा थरते रहेगा सो बी वेरी श्योर सो हाउ डू यू ट्रीट वी विल गिव मिथाइल प्रोडिसोन साइक्लोफॉसोमाइन द कॉम्बिनेशन व्हिच इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ चॉइस इज फॉर्चुनेट टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर कैन द ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स कैन पंच वेदर द वॉइस इज लाउड एंड क्लियर फॉर ऑल द ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स सो 35 year old women two months postpartum presented with four week history of joint pain and fever her physical findings are shown in the figure what do you have a classical rash of sle so triad of sle kya hota hai fever development of joint pains along with the rash what type of arthritis if you take a radiograph non erosive arthritis is the classical feature of the um classical feature of the sle is what you have to basically remember <clears throat> so uh now what is not a feature of the condition which is being shown in the image what do you see in the image in the image you are able to see a bleed happening in the cerebellum so what are the features of cerebellar dysfunction you have a intention tremor you ask the patient to touch the nose he will be shivering at the end of the moment not the tremor at the rest is what you have to basically remember so cerebellar dysfunction is by danish pastry this diet of coccinacea ataxia nystagmus intention tremor slurred speech hypotonia etc etc is what you have to basically remember so you will all become post graduates in no time so when you become post graduates first year mbbs ke baad students will come to you for first clinical posting so you should hold their hand 
take them to a cerebellar dysfunction patient, tell them Danish pastry and uh, then uh, actual, actual teachers are postgraduates and young assistant professors who are enthusiastic, right? So that is the reason every day when you are doing post graduation take an opportunity to teach uh, the medical students uh, and that is how you will uh, you yourself will revise and also you will make them uh, strong and uh, then only that is the best way of uh, medical education. I attended uh, some of the conferences and uh, everywhere I found um, across world that, that is the same problem who will teach nobody will teach. We have to learn and uh, you as postgraduates need to be proactive every day one problem case show the student, medical student and uh, share with him what you have understood about that case. Whether he understands or not doesn't matter. He will understand because he has to read pathology, so many things. But at least you will create that uh, intellectual curiosity in him. They go a murmur, this uh, auscultatory finding etc. So that is the pleasure. So I always wanted to be a faculty in medical school but I never had a chance. And anyway, uh, I am every day with uh, the full fledged doctors like you. Huh? So what is the lesion which is being shown in the figure? Uh, I think uh, the image got little uh, blurred. It is a pontine hemorrhage basically. So what are the three classical features of pontine hemorrhage? Pinpoint pupil, pyrexia and paralysis. Oculomotor palsy is a feature in which part of the brain stem? Midbrain. Midbrain may you have oculomotor and cochlea. Trigeminal, facial, abducens are there in 5th, 6th, 7th are there in pons. 8th, 9th, 10th everything is there in medulla. So that is what you need to basically um, remember. <coughs> now doctor, the patient is presenting with Horner's syndrome and ataxia and neuroimaging was done. Typically lateral part of the medulla is showing uh, the infarctive changes. So it is a lateral medullary syndrome of Mellenberg. It is caused by what? Pica, posture inferior cerebral artery. But uh, most common vessel leading to it is not pica. Pica classically lead to lateral medullary. But most common vessel whose stenosis leads to the lateral medullary syndrome is vertebral artery. That is the whole fun of this uh, question, it is vertebral artery. A previously 75 year old woman presents with thyroidness, mildly raised lymphocyte count and her peripheral smear. What do you see here? Smudge cells. Smudge cells are classical of CLL. So in CLL whenever you take a peripheral smear, those uh, fragile cells become broken and the broken appearing cells are called smudge cells which is classical of CLL. So the moment you diagnose CLL, one of the most important decision you need to make is uh, shall I start or shall I not start the chemotherapy. So what is the deciding factor? If you do immunophenotyping, you will know what subtype of CLL it is. What is the prognostication is done basically based on the subtype, immunophenotype of CLL. Suppose if it is a benign subtype which has no chance of converting into a lymphoma, right? It is called what? If it converts into lymphoma, a CLL converts into lymphoma, what is that syndrome called? Richer's syndrome. So, is there any chance of converting into lymphoma? You need to evaluate. If uh, it is a benign immunophenotype, there is no need of treatment. CLL patient who is in his 65, 70 can comfortably live another 15, 20 years and die without taking a single dose of chemotherapy. Lot of patients will do very well. So, which type of leukemia best prognosis doctor out of ALL, AML, CLL, CA, CLL? CLL has got the best prognosis is what you have to basically remember. Now, you have been shown the anatomy, um, a lesion in the uh, actually we should not tell the lesion in the hospital though. By mistake, I forgot to remove the lesion in the occipital lobe. So, what are the features you see in this uh, lesion in the occipital lobe? Typically, you will find cortical blindness. 
each of the lobes frontal lobe is for personality temporal lobe is for what broca's area is there in the inferior frontal wernicke's is in temporal so you must know each lobe what is their function okay bleling syndrome etc etc all lobar dysfunction associated gersman syndrome bleling syndrome everything wash clean the linen and go to the exam hall so be sure doctor huh? then um, 21 year old female sudden onset of left sided head and neck pain young sweet 21 year old female 24 hours later she has got sudden onset of hemiparesis and uh, what is mri showing there is a infarction in the area of middle cerebral artery so neuroimaging is shown what is the most likely underlying cause whenever stroke occurs in a 21 year old young female it is called stroke at young and what is the common predisposing factor for it left carotid artery dissection is the most important cause the two commonest causes of the young stroke which is less than 40 years is one is any cardiac problem if it is there embolism second is left carotid artery dissection are the two things that you should not basically forget now doctor <coughs> yeah both are both are given uh, but in view of a clinical presenting feature of the pain in the sudden onset of the pain in the neck huh? ah. so 27 year old with uh, fever urethritis arthralgia fever urethritis arthralgia and her examination findings have been shown to you what do you see a swollen ankle along with uh, lesions papillar lesions and uh, petechial and papillar lesions on the uh, foot which is classical in a young individual what is the cause for the arthritis along with the skin lesions disseminated gonococcemia so disseminated gonorrhea is the one which you need to basically remember as the underlying cause now doctor 70 year old with increasing shortness of the breath fever and cough and a chest x-ray has been shown so what is this chest x-ray showing you it is showing a typical low bar pneumonia so otherwise the question is in a case of community acquired pneumonia what are the factors identified by the international cardiothoracic society as the uh, i mean bts british thoracic society as the prognostic factors of community acquired pneumonia so you should be very sure uh, increasing age comorbidity respiratory rate more than 30 bp less than 90 systolic hypoxemia Similar WBC count less than 4000 or more than 20,000 are just radiographic signs like that there is a list life is completely listed until entrance is over so be sure what are the prognostic factors that decide the community acquired pneumonia even as a clinic in clinical practice you are running a nursing home tomorrow a patient of pneumonia came shall I admit him or not which cases can go home and take a amoxiclavulanic acid and which need to be admitted inside the hospital and should receive intravenous antibiotics all these guidelines you must be very sure while managing the, the patients okay doc now 47 year old memory impairment worsening over a period of 9 months jerking movements and uh, his EEG is being shown in the FIGA which diagnosis what is the diagnosis so jerking movement or myoclonic and he is also having dementia and EEG is being given to you do you really need to look into EEG and make a super duper diagnosis to come to conclusion ECG padne mein hi dikkat hai upar se EEG bhi padna kaha aata so is liye always image based questions mein case history based only you must reach maximum confusion I mean conclusion right so if you happen to read a photo unnecessarily it will bring uh, confusion so biphasic high amplitude sharp waves on eeg 
these uh, waves are called as. In a patient of dementia with uh, myoclonic jerks, you should think of Crookspell's Jacobs disease is what need to be remembered. So tomorrow we have a excellent class by Dr. Khalil. He is like a uh, Brihaspati in microbiology. Eh? If you want to talk about Indian mythological saint. Eh? And a very, very proactive, energetic teacher from morning uh, 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock. He will take you through a spectrum of around 480 MCQs asked in the past 15 years of DNBCET. And he will cover for you around uh, um, 32 major topics from which 85% questions in DNBCET will come in microbiology. So, please do not miss the chance. And on Tuesday, I will teach you two subjects. I will review two subjects for you. Psychiatry and uh, what else? Psychiatry and dermatology. Psychiatry. Dermatology very easy. Just 13 topics if you read. 13 topics. Psoriasis, drug eruptions, femficus vulgaris and bullous femphigoid. DNB. CET question bank is highly predictable, right? So, I will revise these two subjects on uh, Tuesday. So, please do come, uh, eat well, sleep well and keep your brain intact and then come uh, and we will destroy it as much as possible by the end of the day. Huh? So, <clears throat> 31 year old woman witnessed first ever seizure. She is drowsy. CD shows few petechial hemorrhages on the right hemisphere and the MRI has been shown. What is it showing? It is showing the sinus venous occlusion. Eh? So, this is an example and what is the best initial treatment for that scenario? You need to anticoagulate her to uh, manage the sinus venous thrombosis. In whom is this uh, kind of venous sinus thrombosis uh, is uh, common? Those who take oral contraceptive pills, you should be very careful. Tomorrow as gynecologist, some of you will give OCPs. A OCPs patient comes with severe headache. One possibility could be that OCPs are leading to thrombotic tendency. But which patient it will happen, you don't know. Right? And OCPs are available OTC, over the counter. Huh? So, uh, some will uh, 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 end up, uh, especially... Some people will have factor 5 lethal deficiency or um, some will have antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. There are all the other predisposing factors for the procoagulant tendency. 28 year old with hypertension, palpable kidneys and his imaging findings. What does it show up there? It shows typical polycystic kidney disease, ADPKD. So, what else will you find in them? They will also have polycythemia is what you need to basically remember. 54 year old obese man with a history of angina, hypertension, central crushing chest pain and uh, ECG is being shown. What is the ECG showing? Ventricular tachycardia and a patient of ventricular tachycardia, external defibrillator is uh, located 2 minutes away on the other ward. So, his uh, what is the uh, uh, advanced cardiac and basic cardiac life support uh, uh, algorithm, what does it uh, tell to you? In that scenario, what do you want to do in a pulseless state? You should be given a precordial thumb followed by chest compression. So, how many thumbs, how many uh, times you need to blow all these uh, guidelines of ACLS and uh, basic life support, you need to be very sure doctor. Then uh, a male infant is rushed to emergency department by his parents with a short history of blue lips and breathlessness. So, it is a cyanotic state that the baby is having. And echo is being shown to you. What do you see? That tricuspid valve is placed at a little higher level. Right? And the ventricle, instead of uh, being of only ventricular size, it also has uh, encroached upon the area where atrium was there. That is called atrialization of the ventricle in the four chamber view that you are seeing. Such an abnormally placed uh, tricuspid valve is called as 
abstains anomaly. Abstains anomaly comes under synotic or asynotic conditions. Synotic and what type of synosis is called? Intermittent synosis it is called as. Sometimes the baby may look normal. While you are examining, he will become blue. That is a very classical feature of the Epstein's anomaly is what you have to basically remember. A patient presents with a history of the low back pain and sciatica and the pain is rotate, uh, radiating to little toe and the ankle reflex is absent. So, where is the compression? So, doctor, I think you all know the foot nerve supply. Foot may big toe and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no polydactyly. I am not good in this image. Sir. Uh -huh. So, little toe is supplied by S1. Little toe is on the lateral surface of your foot. Big toe is always supplied by L5. Easy to remember is big is 5. 5 is a big number. Little is small. Small is a 1. So, S1 supplies little toe, L5 supplies big toe. Please do not forget, examiner frequently asks this question. Huh? So, what is the root value of each of the deep tendon reflexes? Which is L3, L5, C5, C6, C8, T1, each of the various deep tendon reflexes. That list is not there. Neurology means... Uh, Mathematical job only. Click here, click there and then discover where is the problem in the transformer. Transformer is the spinal cord. Electrician job. Plug point date na? Or uh, kaha fuse off ho gaya? MCP kaha gir gaya date na? Ah, that is called as uh, uh, neurology. Now a 4 year old boy, history of constipation at the age of 6 months. Rectal examination reveals long ampulla, poor sphincter tone, but uh, ankle wink is present and the stool is there in the rectal vault. So, how do you differentiate between that of Hirschsprung's disease which lead to megacolon from that of a functional constipation leading to dilated colon? Dono may dilated colon data, but if you found the anum and anorectum loaded with feces that does not happen in hip springs. Hip springs may a ganglionic segment will be constricted and normal ganglionic segment proximal to that will be dilated. But functional constipation may you find the stools loaded into the anorectal area. So, that is the reason it is unlikely to be hip springs. If on examination you found uh, the uh, loaded stools. So, there is a reason you need to assure the parents and give them a dietary counseling to feed the baby not with uh, the American chocolates brought by the mama in the from the airport while coming from Dubai. Lot of people who come from uh, uh, duty free shopping, uh, what they bring? Uh, generally chocolates. Generally chocolates. So, do they have fiber? No fiber. So, until the box is over, one day only kids will finish the box. As such, mama is uh, non-living anymore. So, that is what. So, all problems start with the uh, type of food that we feed the kids. Now, 13 year old boy with a 3 day history of low grade fever, upper respiratory infection, sore throat. And uh, there is an increasing severity of his sore throat. And the pharynx is showing a bulge in the posterior wall. And what do you find? Uh, retropharyngeal abscess. So, how do you want to manage him? Retropharyngeal abscess can lead to the embarrassment of the respiratory tract. That is the reason you need to basically drain it. So, you need to give a surgical consultation for incision and drainage under general anesthesia is what need to be basically remembered. Two year old child presents with four day history of rash. Limited to the feet and ankles. And uh, three months old sibling of the patient also has got a same rash. So, when multiple people in the same family are having the rash, which is pruritic, even without looking image only, you could diagnose it as KABIS. So, how do you manage it? Permethrin. 
is considering the treatment of choice. Now, doctor, at the time of delivery, a woman is noted to have a large volume of amniotic fluid. And uh, typically, what is this showing? Double bubble appearance. So, diurinal atresia in the fetus can lead to development of polyhydramnios in the mom is what you have to basically remember. Then, uh, you have been shown the findings on imaging in the figure. So, what does it basically uh, suggest? It is uh, typically called water lily appearance. Suddenly, you should uh, go back to that pond uh, lily, imagine it uh, in the middle of exam hall, in the middle of the battle. Huh? So, water lily appearance is ruptured hydrated cyst. 50 year old presented with hematemesis, 500 ml of blood, BP 90 by 60 and the CT abdomen has been shown to you. So, what do you see on the CT abdomen? A significantly enlarged spleen. So, when the spleen is enlarged and the patient is having hematemesis, what is the most probable diagnosis? Portal hypertension is what you have to basically um, expect. Now, what do you see on the nipple? In this given case, you are able to see a blood tinged discharge from the nipple. So, what is the most common cause for such a kind of a discharge, doctor? It is basically a ductal papilloma, is what need to be remembered. Those who are taking the offline test, in the smartphone they gave the page, no? So, you are able to browse through the images, right? Otherwise, uh, is it red color or which color? Uh, very difficult to tell on a simple paper given to you. Eh? So, we will put all the images into one single page on newsformedico.com and we will give the URL. You type that URL into your smartphone and you have got the all images so that you will get the clarity. Just like the online exam students. Now, on clinical findings of the breast, which have been shown to you, what is this? It is a greasy cheesy greenish discharge which is classical of ductectasia is what need to be remembered. 35 year old female presented with a swelling in the neck and uh, uh, she had treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma earlier. Treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma include radiation. So, somebody had got a swelling of the neck, past history of radiation what is the diagnosis? Papillary carcinoma of uh, the thyroid is something that you need to basically expect. In a 40 year old with a typical neck mass, the histology is being shown. What is this histology showing? Orphan anneoid cells is what you are able to see and that is very classical of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. So, total thyroidectomy with the lymph nodal dissection is considered to be the management of choice. 20 year old male with chronic constipation with headache and uh, a nodule in the thyroid is being found. Uh, uh, and uh, what do you see? Bumpy, lumpy mucosal neuromas of the tongue and the lips, morphanoid habitus, and in the eye, typically. Uh, engorged corneal nerves is what you are able to see which is classical of men to be medullated corneal nerve fibers and uh, men to be is a diagnosis. Kaushalya Devi is a 75 year old woman post myocardial infarction she has got CHF parathyroid adenoma was removed previously and uh, now her serum calcium is high once more in spite of removing earlier parathyroid and investigation is showing a uh, typical nodule which is picking up the radionuclide. That means there is a development of a recurrence of the uh, hyperparathyroidism post operation, post surgery there is a recurrence. So, how do you want to manage that scenario? Ultrasound guided alcohol injection into the mass is uh, the best way to manage uh, post-operative recurrences of the hyperparathyroidism in a previously operated 
case of parathyroid adenoma is what you have to basically remember. Now, what do you see in the figure? You find a cystic lesion in the phalangeal bones with a resorption and a salt and pepper like skull which is classical of hyperparathyroidism. Osteitis fibrosa cystica is what you need to basically remember. So, in the scenario what you have hypercalcemia, renal calculate, generalized osteoporosis but not osteosclerosis. Porosis raita, cystic changes raita, not sclerosis like chlorosis. Chlorosis lead to osteosclerosis. Sclerosis means whitening. Uh, lightening of the bone is porosis. Eh? Then a febrile patient has CT abdomen which is being shown to you. And what is the most common cause of this condition? CT abdomen is showing multiple cystic lesions which is suggest to acute pyogenic liver abscess. So, in pyogenic liver abscess, the common source is biliary tract infection is the predisposing factor is what you have to basically remember. 44 year old toddy worker presented with abdominal pain. Generally, those who are uh, toddy workers or who drink toddy actually. There is a contamination with entamoeba. So, amoebiasis is very common in them. So, he is showing the presence of an abscess in the liver and whenever you are draining, what is the color of the liquid coming out? Anchovy sauce colored pus is coming out, which is classical of amoebic liver abscess. So, what is the uh, true statement about it? Metronazole is the mainstay. If there are multifocal abscess, you cannot use pair. That is, uh, um, aspiration is not the part of the treatment. Then it is more common in the right lobe, more common in the men than in the women is what you have to basically understand. Now doctor, 42 year old patient with abdominal pain, ultrasound is being shown. What is that? Gallstones. So what are the risk factors for gallstones? Out of all, most important risk factor is which one? The body mass index more than 30 with a family history is the most important risk factor for the gallstone is something which you should not forget. A 42 year old with abdominal pain and distension of the abdomen. What do you see? There is a gas in the biliary tree along with the intestinal di distension, small intestinal distension. Along with in the ileum there is an obstruction with the gallstone. So classical of gallstone ileus. So it can be diagnosed with abdominal x-ray. There is a fistula which is developing from the gallbladder to duodenum and uh, there is a tumbling obstruction which is present is what you have to remember and we do not do cholecystectomy in the same sitting as that of uh, clearing the intestinal obstruction. Same sitting we do not do both of them is what you have to basically appreciate. Now you have been shown the ultrasound of the gallbladder. What is this classical appearance of the gallbladder basically called as? Typically, there is a gallbladder mucosal which is showing that stellate pattern, otherwise called kiwi fruit is there, no? Kiwi pattern it is called as. So, how do you manage it? The mucosal of the gallbladder is an indication for cholecystectomy is what you have to basically remember. Then, uh, 76 year old with acute onset of persistent back pain. CD scan is being shown which is being taken emergently. So, what is it uh, showing? It is showing the aortic aneurysm which has undergone a rupture and uh, um, she has got blood, uh, bloody mucus per rectum after surgery for that uh, aortic aneurysm. So, now the question comes, what is the most likely underlying cause for it? Whenever you operate aortic aneurysm and aorta, from the aorta only you get super mesenteric artery, inter mesenteric artery, etc, etc. So, the blood flow to them will become affected. That will affect the intestinal blood flow after you operate for aortic aneurysm. And that can interfere with the blood flow to the gut. That will suffer ischemia. Ischemic gut will undergo bleeding and bleeding will lead to the blood and mucus in the stool is what you have to basically remember. 
now doctor do you think question paper is too tough no no predictable clinical vignette only khatam ho history is the thumb doctor investigations image are little finger you don't need to worry about them thumb only at thumb level or tomorrow as a clinician also do you need to see all investigations put like this and then keep checking where is the diagnosis no when the patient tells the history when the patient is walking into the clinic only you should get the intuition isko kya problem hai isko piles hai ya fissure hai ya fistula hai ya hydrocele hai ya hernia hai kya hota hai general surgery ke clinic mein maximum 8 to 10 dramatic diagnosis right the intestinal obstruction hai for all the previous surgery you have done if you develop radiations if he comes with intestinal obstruction okay i think that is the first diagnosis you will be guessing it. right because you operated you know that uh, possibilities ha huh? so 21 year old comes with a abnormal pap smear what is this called squamous cells which are high grade squamous cell dysplasia so hsil is what you are finding and uh, generally they will have cin2 or cin3 lesion if you do the colposcopic biopsy so what is responsible for this kind of uh, change it is a human papilloma virus type 16 is a predisposing factor for the cervical cancer is what you have to ultimately remember so that is a story called image based questions